Hi, this is Jordan with Hardy House Games. Today we'll be talking about the legendary deck building game Dominion. Specifically, we'll be looking at mid to late game strategies. If you missed it, you can check out my video on early game strategies in the link right here. Or not, it's up to you. Either way, you're in the right place to learn Dominion strategies so you can win all of your games and make all of your friends hate you. Now before I get too far into this video, I should point out that Dominion is a pretty complex game with many cards, lots of different strategies. Each card has its own unique strengths and weaknesses based on which cards are in the game. So obviously I can't do the entire game justice in just a short video, but what I can do is provide you with overarching strategies that should work in most of your Dominion games. And again, this video is focused strictly on the mid and late game aspect of Dominion. Now what do I define as mid game? Mid game is that part of the game in which your deck is the strongest. At this point, you've already purchased several action cards that work well together, you've likely trashed a lot of weak cards like coppers, and your deck is just loaded with exciting cards for really big plays. In many games, mid game is when your deck doesn't have any victory points in it. You're far enough into the game to have trashed all of your early estates, but maybe not far enough to have started buying the bigger victory point cards like duchies or provinces. This is the juiciest time of the game when you might have turns where you you actually go through your entire deck, assuming you're not playing with a sloggy set of kingdom cards. So assuming it's not a sloggy game, let me kind of walk you through what I think is the strategically best way to approach the action phase of your turn. If you played the early game right, you should start just about every turn with action cards in your hand that provide you with more actions. Cards like villages, peddler variants, anything that has plus any number of actions on it. Those cards should be in just about every one of your starting hands. And generally it's kind of a no-brainer to play these cards first. And in your strongest turns, you might have three or more villages in play, giving you tons of actions for flexibility throughout the rest of your turn. And with that, you should be playing tons and tons of action cards. Now, there will come a moment in every single one of your turns where the action phase has to come to an end. If you're lucky enough, that will come because your deck ran out. More commonly though, it's when you run out of action cards to play, or you've run out of actions provided by cards like your villages. At this point, you'll really need to scrutinize how you play that last action or two. Just to give an example, suppose you were unlucky enough to end your turn with only one action left, but you have two action cards in your hand. You have a remodel and a smithy. You can only play one of them, so which one should you choose? Well, of course it depends. If you happened to have, say, seven coins at that point in your turn, maybe it makes more sense to play the smithy and you can hope that you buy more treasure cards, thus getting you to eight coins that turn, allowing you to buy a province. Alternatively, maybe the smithy is not a good idea to play because you're likely going to just draw three action cards that you're not going to be able to play. Really advanced players would be keeping track of which cards are in the deck and which cards they've played and they would know whether or not they're likely to draw just three action cards at this point. Now in a slightly different scenario, maybe the remodel is the better card to play. Maybe you don't have enough coins this turn to justify looking for more treasure cards using your smithy. And maybe you know your deck is lacking in some aspect. Maybe you need stronger treasure cards. So you could potentially use your remodel to remodel the smithy into something like a bandit, a mine, or a gold. And if you're not ready to part with your smithy at this point, even though you're not going to be able to play it, you might consider remodeling something else in your hand. Whatever the case is, the last few action cards you play on your turn can be highly circumstantial, but they can be an important part of the game that give you an edge over your opponents if you play them correctly. Your decision should be informed by how you think it's going to influence your deck and the trajectory of the rest of your game. My next tip for the mid game is don't feel like you have to max out your buying power every turn. What I mean by this is just because you have four coins on your turn doesn't mean you need to buy a card that costs four. For example, maybe your deck needs more villages because you don't have enough actions, and so you buy a village worth only three, even though you could have bought a four power card but it would have been a terminal action card, so maybe it wouldn't have been the best thing for your deck. Similarly, you don't have to buy a gold every time you have six coins on your turn. Usually it's a really good idea, but sometimes it's not. For example, maybe you have two buys and it makes more sense to buy like a silver and a chapel. Whatever the case is, just try not to get tunnel vision and assume that you have to buy the most expensive thing you can afford. Sometimes the strategic decision is to buy something a little cheaper because it's going to help you a lot more in the long run. 
My final tip for mid game is to be aware of the flow of the game and realize the end could be coming sooner than you think. So in the start of the mid game, most if not all the provinces are still in play and none of the kingdom card decks are really close to diminishing. During this time, it makes sense to be buying action cards and building that deck engine. And of course, buying provinces whenever you get the chance. But as provinces start to dwindle, you should consider buying victory point cards more frequently. Generally, when half of the provinces are gone, you should shift your thinking from mid game to late game. And similarly, you can start anticipating late game when one of the kingdom card piles is gone and maybe two of them look like they're starting to get close. Whichever one it is, it's important to catch the trigger for late game early. Now, most people don't think late game when there's still half of the provinces left, but I'm telling you the game is going to end soon. People have strong decks at this point and that last half of provinces is going to disappear a lot faster than the first half. So if half the provinces are there, you are in the late game usually. So now that we're at this point, let's talk about late game strategies. Too often I see people buying action cards later in the game when it's almost over. Don't do that. Chances are you're never going to see that action card again before the game is over. Best case scenario, it might make its way around and you only get to play it once. So at this point you need to be aware of how often you're shuffling your deck. If for example you're shuffling your deck every third turn, do you really think the game is going to last three rounds before provinces run out? And even if it did last three more rounds, is that one action card going to provide you more value than just buying something like a duchy? When it does make its way around and you play it, it would have to give you a benefit of more than three victory points to justify purchasing it. So when provinces are low or it's getting close to three empty kingdom card piles, just buy victory points. And don't be afraid of duchies and don't be afraid of estates in the late game. I've actually won several games just by one point because because I was audacious enough to buy an estate at the end of the game. In fact, it's usually a good idea to buy an estate if you have the buying power to get, say, a province and an estate. So if you know the game is going to end relatively soon, buy a ton of victory cards and just bloat your deck. The game is almost over, you don't have to worry about the engine, just fill it. And those are my mid to late game strategies for Dominion. Start with your action replenishing cards, scrutinize how your action cards should be played and what they'll mean for the trajectory of the rest of your game. Keep a close eye out for when late game starts, generally when half the provinces are gone, and just start buying a ton of victory points in the late game, which starts sooner than you think, I promise. Which mid to late game strategies have you found super useful? Were there any games where something totally crazy happened that you'd never seen before? If so, let us know in the comments. And if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe for more board game strategy videos. You'll get better at gaming, you'll win all the time, your friends will hate it, it's awesome. But if you don't have friends to play with, who will you win against? Advanced Darkness.